What's up guys, I'm Andrew with Nautilus and today we're going to talk to you guys about how to choose the proper spear gun uh, to get started in whatever application you guys are going to be doing. So when it comes to spear guns there's a lot of different kind of guns, I'm going to keep it pretty simple, if not this video would be an hour long. Uh, so we're just going to keep it simple with a couple guns here, uh, there's different kinds, there's pneumatic, there's band powered, traditional, roller, wooden, carbon, all kinds of guns. The first thing I usually ask somebody is, hey, you know, uh, what is it, what kind of diving are you going to be doing? Are you going to do blue water? Are you going to do reef action? Are you going to be around structure? You know, what is it? What, what's, what's, uh, what, you know, what are you going after? Stuff like that. Do you need something that's going to hit hard with a lot of penetration? Are you going to be shooting it in rocks? So, you know, for, you know, all those things are going to matter. Obviously, the more you're around structure, the more you're around rocks and stuff of that nature, uh, you may not want to go with such a long spear gun because it's going to be very cumbersome to have it on you. You want maybe something a little shorter. Shorter guns tend to be between 50 centimeters to maybe somewhere in the 90 centimeter range. And by, so by that I do mean not overall length, but maybe something that we refer to as barrel size. Uh, for instance, here we got a uh, Rob Allen spear gun. They call this an 80 centimeter gun. I'm not going to get too technical, but we call these pipe guns. Uh, Rob Allen calls them rail guns, but in reality it's a pipe uh, with a handle and a muzzle. Oscar, you can come in a little closer. So this is your, you know, pipe gun. There's different kinds. There's Rob Allen, there's Hammerhead, there's Pathos, you know, there's uh, uh, CX Sub, there's JBL. There's a lot of different pipe gun styles out there. This is a very uh, common, you know, common gun that you're going to see out there, a lot of reviews. Uh, these guns, you know, are not very expensive. They're in the two to $300 range for the aluminums. Very good, you know, traditional pipe gun. Uh, this size gun would be something I would not use for blue water. It's not a very long gun. It's something that you can use maybe on the reef, uh, you know, maybe around structures and stuff like that. So, you know, this would be a good maybe reef rock gun for the most part, just due to the size and due to, due to the nature of it. From there, you know, it's robust, it's tough, it's aluminum, you can beat the crap out of it. It doesn't, you know, it's not easy to break. Uh, aluminum pipe guns are pretty pretty good for maybe commercial dives, uh, you know, or just beating your stuff up against the rocks on shore, uh, shore dives and stuff of that nature. So then we step up from there to what's called a pipe gun, but a carbon pipe gun. So it's same principle, you have your muzzle, you have your uh, tube, and then of course you got your handle on the back. Uh, this would be a little bit of a bigger gun. This is a 110. They're going to be a little bit more expensive. We started here with the aluminum pipe guns. You can get those maybe in the 100 two to $300 range. Carbon fiber pipe guns are going to range closer to the three to $400 plus dollar range. And they go up from there. Uh, so this would be a good choice or maybe a good mix of a little bit of reef, a little bit of open water. A 110 is not too bad. Uh, it's almost kind of a do-it-all gun. There's no real such thing as a do-it-all gun really in my opinion, but hey, this is as close as, uh, of a size as you can get, at least down here in Miami and in the Keys. Uh, you may want to up it to two bands instead of one band, and that's going to work pretty well. The carbon fiber, uh, it doesn't allow the barrel to flex as easily, so it keeps it nice and straight. The longer the gun, uh, the more straight you want it to be to avoid any kind of shaft whip, and, uh, shaft whip and that kind of stuff. So that's pretty sweet. Then from there we can get into wood guns. This is actually a JBL Euro. Uh, pretty sweet. JBL's actually done a lot of uh, coming up in the last couple years. Uh, so this is what we would call a um, you know traditional uh, hip loader. Uh, even though they call it a Euro, you have the butt all the way in the back, but there's still an extension. So you could actually place this on your hip and load it as a traditional hip loading spear gun. I'm talking, by the way, mostly apnea. I'm not talking about spear fishing on scuba. Um, both these guns back here are chest loading guns. If you guys want to see how to chest load a spear gun, check the links down here on our videos and you'll be able to see uh, how to do that. This is what we call a hip loader because of the big butt. Uh, even granted, yes, the mechanism is in the back, hence why we call it a Euro, but there's still, you know, you still got that little piece there so you can technically hip load. This gun is going to range between uh, three to four hundred ish dollars. It's not a very, you know, it's a great gun uh, for that price. Some people prefer wood. Wood is quiet doesn't make a lot of noise, you can hand, it can actually take a pretty, uh, pretty good band load. Not all wood guns are made the same, so just because you see a stock that's wood doesn't mean it's a good spear gun. Uh, from there there's higher end wood guns, like what we have here, this is the Hatch Amaro 120. Uh, Hatch, my, this gun's made by Mike Hatcher. This gun's going to range closer to that you know, $600 range. It's in closed track, that's good if you want a free shaft, meaning if you don't want to have your shooting line attached. 
you can use this to free shaft. Um, made out of teak. Uh, again, the advantages of wood, they're quiet. They can take a lot of power. Uh, you can shape it. Um, you know, there's, there's quite a few advantages to that. Uh, they also, you know, you can have your enclosed track. You know, they look pretty uh, for the most part. So you, you could also, if you have this gun for four or five years and it looks like, you know, doesn't look very good, you could sand it down, uh, varnish it all over again, it'll look brand spanking new. So, you know, those are some advantages to your wood guns. Uh, and then, you know, uh, there's carbon fiber shaped guns. Uh, you can turn around, just show them real quick that uh, blue tech on the wall. So there's, you know, shaped carbon guns like those, you know, and that's gonna be, uh, you know, in that thousand dollar range. Uh, that's for very high-end, very finesse uh, spear fishing. Uh, it doesn't always have to be finesse, actually. There's some pretty, pretty heavy-duty carbon ones. But last thing that I haven't showed you is roller guns. So this is a uh, uh, Patho Sniper roller. Uh, the thing with roller guns is that they can shoot very, very far and not be a very long gun because the bands are going to pull all the way to the tip of the gun. I do have a review on almost all these guns if you guys want to check it out on the uh, links below. I'm, try I'm trying not to get too in depth if not this video is just going to be way too long. So a uh, roller gun is a pretty good idea if you're going to travel. You don't have to take a big tuna gun with you. Uh, this one is in close track, has multiple pretensioners. A 125 is going to shoot like a cannon. This is a 125 sniper roller. This thing is going to have uh, significant range. You could technically use this for blue water such as Wahoo. Uh, I wouldn't hesitate to shoot a tuna with it uh, or any other pelagic species as well. So the truth of the matter is will all these guns work and will all these guns shoot nice and straight? For the most part the answer is yes. Find out which gun fits your budget. If your budget is maybe $200 you're gonna want to look into aluminum pipe guns like this one. If your budget it might be a little higher than that then you can start looking into the wood, the carbon fiber, the roller gun options. And then you also want to make sure you get the size right. You don't want to use a big giant gun if you're going to be sticking it inside rocks and basically you won't ever get a shot off because you're going to be busy trying to maneuver that gun inside rocks, inside a wreck or whatever it may be. So make sure the size matches what you're trying to do. If you're out in the kelp beds, you don't also want a giant big gun. If you're out in a deep reef where it's mostly open and you have maybe a few coral heads here and there, you may want to look at something a little bit bigger. So, you know, just kind of try to match it up. I hope this video is a little helpful. There's just so many variations, so many variables to talk about. There's no way I can do it in one video. But at least maybe this helps give you guys an, an idea of what might work for you. Uh, so, you know, hope you guys enjoyed the video. A lot of love. Catch you guys later.